Thank God we're finally in the facility. Holy. Honestly, being in my room, I felt like I was going insane in the head. Feels really good to be back in the office. I think everyone was like really trying to push for us to get in here as fast as possible. It definitely felt really good to see everyone's faces and talk about the game with your teammates in between scrims, which is like, I think really important. It was pretty nice that we can talk each other face to face, talk about game stuff. I'm more motivated playing at facility with teammates. It feels kind of uh, familiar to be back in the office, also feels a little new. One of the things that we were trying to do is make the room a lot bigger. And I guess we got that done just in time for coronavirus so we can social distance better. Gosh, it's gotta be way more than six feet. It's gotta be like 18 feet at least. And everyone is just spread out in like this massive room now. It looks so much bigger now. It's like a gymnasium almost. So our normal day-to-day -day at the office has changed a lot. It used to be that we would just, you know, straggle in. Now we have to go through a temperature check when we come in. And there's disinfectant dispensers screwed everywhere to all of the walls, just magically peered out of nowhere. Our scrim reviews, luckily, are still all kind of together in person. It's just that we're all in the cafeteria with big spread out chairs. It's a little bit different still because we have to like wear masks when we go and review and then we can't all be in the same room at the same time. So it's a little bit not the same, but it's not that hard, I think, to transition into that. Definitely scrimming here together with the team is way better than scrimming alone at home. The style of doing one-on-ones of position coaching throughout eSport has changed. We just try to grab players when we can and when we see that, that we have a pulse on the team and we see that like we should talk. We should talk. At the beginning of the year, we kind of like delegated who was taking care of who just based off like strengths. I just handle Ray because I've worked with him for so long and I kind of like understand how he wants to play the game. With Matt, he's just someone that I can go to with like anything league related or not about like what I can be doing better. And I think that's not something I generally always have with all the coaches. He knows like what tilts me. He knows what frustrates me. He'll usually just like message me or like say like, hey, like, I don't think you should be doing this. Like, you need to watch how you're like talking here. He gives his like opinion on like what he thinks uh, is good in the jungle. For me, a lot of times I, I like to talk like with, for example, with Set, I would talked a lot with Andy and Ruin. They like play the champion a lot. And I'm like, hey, if I can flex this champion, like what could you gain in draft from this? You know, like that's usually the discussion that I have with them. Brandon is Masters, Grandmasters, Challenger, in and out uh, support player, right? And he, he's dabbled in jungle, which they're very similar roles. I think uh, with Brandon, we usually talk about item build and like some matchup, like rune stop, keystones. I think it helps a lot because like every matchup is different. You need, you just need like different keystone and like item build. And I think Brandon is really smart at it. It's going really good. Yeah. Actually, I talked with LS. I heard that like he played Bolivar like more than 100 games, and he, he told me that PTA is good against the Trolls. If you guys watch LS's streams, I think he played like 180 games of Bolivar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh. So I talked with him um, after his first day um, that he played it, or like before he was about to play it. Uh, I talked with him because I, I spammed Bolivar as soon as he got reworked, um, and so I, I feel like, yeah, I just have a lot of games on him. I've been pretty outspoken about him. Yeah. <laughs> Bolivar against that matchup, it's, it's just usually like long trade, you know? Conqueror is always uh, better than PTA. Thinking against FlyQuest, I think it'll be a fun game to watch. And then 100 Thieves, we just have to make sure that we're like really focused and not like taking them lightly because any team can be any team. FlyQuest is going to be fun because we're playing as Power of Evil. That'll be like the grudge match between Ray and PoE. So it's going to be a, a pretty good challenge to see like where we're at on the stage compared to them since they ended uh, second last split. Four teams tied for second will start to break up those ties now as FlyQuest will be taking on CLG. It is going to be banned away here. Rune will not be getting a hold of the bear and Poe Belter has been looking really good on TF. That's going to be taken away. So I think we weren't playing our comp very well in the game yesterday against FlyQuest. We had the J4 Galio Bard and they had two mobile carries. So 
it should be a game where we're constantly putting the pressure on their mobile carries, constantly using our ultis. Kind of all agreed that we didn't really pull the trigger uh, in the moments that we should have in the game, and we just played too timidly. It eventually came down to the Elder Dragon standoff, and that's the part that sucks the most, because um, I made a really big mistake there, and I got caught out. We still almost won that game, you know? Like, I think, I, th I actually think we would've won that game if I didn't get caught at the end. We kind of like looked at what we did poorly that game and wanted to make sure we fixed it for today's game. A lot of teams prioritized Vol Volley Bear uh, on this patch. We were ready for them to play it, so we decided to go with Trundle again. We kind of ended up drafting a lot of really slow lanes, lanes that need a lot of time to scale. So at the start, I was peacefully farming my bottom wave, and then suddenly I see their Bato running at me, and it was really unexpected. And I was pretty sure these guys had no subs, but I thought I was dead. Basically, what happened here is Eugene went mid and he said, as he was going mid, he says, oh, I think it, like we, Azir has TP or something. Uh, but the homie said they could TP in for me. I knew their AD had no flash, so I was able to land a two-man ulti and then kite them out with phase rush. Um, and then they started to try and answer TP, but they were already gone at that point. At the start here, Rune had actually gotten caught and I was showing mid. We had TP and we knew they were going to try and TP flank here. And then we saw the TP come in. Smoothie said, hang on, I'm pretty sure this guy's inting. Uh, we had the insta CC on the TP, and he just died. Andy had a good uh, recon ult on him, and we just one-shot him. Um, if he hadn't have done that, then it maybe could have been pretty bad for us. Yeah, that was a huge moment in the game for us. I think after that point, they were pretty outscaled. Just doing what you know you have to do in order to win, and I think that's something that, um, that we always do in scrims really well, but on stage, I think sometimes we second-guess ourselves too much, and I think that's what I talked to Matt and uh, Song about uh, after a game. Um, not just for myself, but for my teammates as well. So I think that's um, something that we are all gonna try to work on together as a team.